Chalco Chima. That is Huascar dressed in his golden attire. He is coming to claim victory. Kitos. Do you see that man who shines in that litter? He is Huascar. We must take him prisoner. Once his golden diadem falls, the Incas will be without a leader. The Quitos run down from the hills and took Huascar prisoner. We are the victors. Quiz quiz. Do not sing glory yet. There are still troops at the entrance of the bridge. We have to defeat them before we can enter Cusco. Chalco Chima, dress yourself with the golden attire of Huascar, and go in his litter to the encampment of the Cuscos. We will follow you, as if we were his prisoners. When we get closer, we will attack them. The Incas waited for their warriors. Chalco Yupank. Look at our victorious Huascar followed by the Quito prisoners. As the false entourage got closer, the Cuscos noticed that Huascar was not the Inca lord, but Chalco Chima dressed in Huascar's regalia. Precipitously, the Inca warriors began to run in the direction of the sacred city. Having received the news of the fall of Huascar, Huanca. Aki fought one more battle against the Quitos inside Cusco, but his karma was faithful to him and for the last time he lost. Who knows? Had Huascar won, could he have emerged as the second Pakakutek? The world has only one Caesar, one Alexander, and one Napoleon. Those who followed after them are only emulators who fill the pages of history but not the hearts of the people. Inti had given one Pakakutek to save Cusco, but he denied Huascar the honor of preserving the empire. The Incas were threading the last knots of their history in the strings of their Kipo writings. The civil war was over. The future of Pizarro never seemed so fortuitous. Don Francisco, you have decimated the natives of Puna, for reasons that are not clear in the souls of men. Condor Soul, it was my brother who believes that the Indians are subhumans. How about Soto, does he think the same? K.V.A. He has been in the New World longer than my brother. In Nicaragua, they call him the Butcher of Indians. He has money and power. I don't know why is he here, if not, to exterminate the natives. Soto was not the gentleman that history wants us to believe he was. After the conquest of Peru he went to North America, where he died in the Mississippi River. Now. That is an extramino with cojones all the way to his watery grave. In the first days of April of 1532, having no more islanders to exterminate, the Spaniards decided to cross to terra firma. Hernando, pick our most courageous men. The Punas will take you to Tums. Once you secure a strand on the beach, we will go and disembark. In four balsas, Hernando Pizarro, Hernando de Soto, Cristobal de Mina, and Benalcazar navigated the gulf. As they got close to Tums, the islanders began to untie the balsas. Hernando de Soto and Cristobal de Mina, who were at the head of the expedition, managed to reach the shore. Believing that the Tumbasinos would help them, three of their men jumped on land. The warriors of Tums killed the three Spaniards. Soto, seeing what happened to his comrades, spent the night on the high seas. Next day, Pizarro's ships arrived, they disembarked, and unleashed their powerful cavalry. Unable to fight against a force never seen, the Tumbasinos retreated to hide in the bayous. Tums was taken. A mass was celebrated in front of a wooden cross. Don Francisco, you have just consecrated the first massacre in Peru, and killed innocent people who protected what was theirs. It is difficult to understand our great capacity to thrive on the injustices committed against others. We don't seem to learn from our disgraceful acts, for the benefit of mankind. Counter soul, that is the history of our humanity, and we will never change. In Tums, the Spaniards took the native leader prisoner. As Cieza tells us, they constantly admonished Quila Mesa for killing three of their men after they themselves had butchered thousands of Indians. Quila Mesa, tell me where and how to find the Lord of Quito. Wairacocha Francisco, go south on the great deserts, turn east, climb the high mountains, and they will tell you where Atahualpa is. 
His whereabouts are changing day by day due to the civil war. The doors to the empire had been opened, and usurpers left in the direction indicated by Quilamesa. Lord of Quito, the bearded men have landed in Tums, and the Tumbasinos are asking for your help. Atahualpa, who was in his way to Cuzco, ordered to let the invaders continue their march and he returned to Cajamarca to wait for them. Don Francisco, all you have to do is apprehend Atahualpa. And, like Cortes did with Moctezuma, take the Inca hostage. You are worse than Attila who sacked cities, but he did not destroy civilizations. KVA. This is the new world. There are no civilizations here but savages. The Indians were not united to fight against us. Don Francisco, the empire was not different than old Spain with its feudal lords who were not united either, and why it took them so long to get rid of the Moors. Condor Sol. We were the same people, although the Moors were our enemies, we still coexisted. There must have been something in common with the natives in the New World. I didn't see any use for the Indians other than to serve us as slaves and to feed them to our dogs. Didn't you learn anything from Felipillo? All I know is that that Indian could kill one of his own race, if we asked him to do so. What else could he have done? He had to survive. That is where we differ. We are willing to fight and die for our people, while you Indians and mestizos are capable of killing your own for others. The Spaniards left Tums and marched to Pocas on May 1, 1532 leaving 26 soldiers. Francisco encountered their leader who was not too happy to see the invaders. The Curaca heard that the Spaniards took a city with the sword and fire. Marca Vilca, regardless of what you think of us, we will stay in your city. First, you have to swear allegiance to the crown and accept our god. Wairacocha Francisco, I will repeat anything that you ask me to say, as long as you don't kill my people or burn our fields. The notary read the requirement. Fella Pillow. Are you translating El Requerimiento if as is written for these Indians? Yes, Don Francisco. Fella Pillow coerced the Curaca to answer positively. Marca Vilca. Tell the stranger that you will do as they say, even if you don't comprehend their rules, or you will die. This Indian has said yes. Felipillo, what else did you tell him? We never know if what you are translating is what the crown and the church wants of them. Francisquillo, did he repeat what the notary read? Yes, Capito. Word by word. This Indian leader has sworn to abide by the requirement. And what are you two, if not Indians like him? Don Francisco. We are Christians, we speak Castilian, and we are no longer one of them. Condor Sol, these two translators are now refined. Any Indian like them is always a good ally. Don Francisco, five hundred years later we are still a nation of refined Indians, and pretentious mestizos who are not different than the translators.